What is up guys, Marcellus Williams, aka The School Fester, here to educate you on health and social being. And today, guys, is my final SPD Intensity Day on this block. It's week four, so this is my final SPD Intensity Day. I have um, one more day to do tomorrow on this block, and then I'll be starting my new block on Tuesday. But what I want to focus this video on as we go in today, guys, is pretty much showing you... Um, <laughs> Showing you guys, showing you what your boy's been doing with that squat, because that squat has been fire, boy. Those of you who've been following me on Instagram, you already know like that my squat is looking very, very, very much improved. I'm not trying to be arrogant. I'm not trying to be cocky. It's, it, you guys know, those of you who've been with the channel for a long time, whether you follow me on Instagram or not and haven't seen the most recent vids, you guys know that squat's always been like an uphill battle for me, simply um due to like, you know, uh, my leverage is being a little more naturally kyphotic, things like that. But man, it has been great lately. So you guys pretty much saw, um, you actually, not, not pretty much, you guys did see um, day, you know, week one, you saw every day of week one of this block. So you guys saw um, my volume squats that I started off with, which I want to say was like 330 pounds on my, for my top set on my volume day. <laughs> saw me hit 347 pounds for my top set pause on my first SPD intensity day of the block. I saw you know the rest of the days for the week and pretty much haven't like you know seen a whole lot of training footage since then but let me guys let me get you guys caught up so pretty much on uh, and I'll be showing you guys clips as I like take you through this so pretty much on week two for the volume day I came in and hit 354 pounds for my top set of six at about RP7 on my uh, SPD volume day <laughs> As you guys can see, the speed was looking good. You know, speed's looking better. As you guys already know at this point, hopefully by now, um, if you watched like, you know, the SPD intensity day video from week one, which I'll have in the description down below because that goes over like the movement prep, you guys know what type of movement prep that I've been doing recently. You guys also know if you watched some of the other videos from that week that I've been really focusing on trying to like, you know, keep, you know, my back nice type, really focusing on external rotation and lower back extension. Rather than trying to cue neutrality like what I have been in the past, since I realize I'm more naturally kyphotic, I'm trying to go, which, you know, for those who don't know, just means I naturally like to round a little bit more as far as flexion. I'm instead focusing more on rather than neutrality on going to the opposite extreme of extension. It just puts me in a really good overall position um, as far as like the squat, especially like coming up out of the hole, which is what would cause that stall for me would just be a loss of positioning. The strength would be there, but you guys know I get I get into the hole, hit that little stall, and then I can always grind through it. And even though, you know, um, I knew my body well enough to know that even though my RP sixes or sevens may look like RP nines or tens, I knew that I could get through more, but mentally it just didn't feel good, right? It doesn't feel good to know, oh, I got to do three more reps like that, even though you know you can. And like, it's, it's, it's also not fun to constantly get questioned on, oh, you, you know, it's not RP six, RP 10, because you know, speed is relative based upon the individual, but just squatting that slowly suck it, it just you know doing it on top of my leverage just made it suck even more but you guys know in that video the speed was a little bit better but you guys can see that like you know my, my upper body my torso is still like you know it's kind of twisting a little bit the bar is leaning on my back a little bit um it's a little bit of hip shift and it's all just kind of like you know a mess even though it's moving a little bit faster so <clears throat> excuse me from that point is when Brandon and I decided to actually try okay let's try moving the bar lower for those of you who saw my last meet you know that due to the setup of you know the incorrect rack height for my first two attempts on squats the bar is actually a lot higher and that made me fold even harder than what i usually do so we just pretty much went the opposite direction I actually tried to place the bar lower which i'll be showing you guys in today's video exactly like, you know where i used to have the bar on me for my low bar and then where it's actually at you know now like much lower relatively compared to where it was um so we did that so then on my um 
intensity SPD day for week two. I came in with the new low bar position and hit 375 pounds for a top set of four at um, RPE six. Pa no, 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 my bad. RP seven paused. <laughs> So for me guys, keep in mind that at that point, the best I'd ever hit pause, if you guys remember like way back from like, you know, um, before uh, my most recent meet, right after the meet before that, after Power Fest, the most that I worked up to in pause squats was a top set of three with 385 pounds at an RPE of um, eight. So to hit 375 for a set of four at RP7 was really, really good for me. You guys can see the bar was still slightly tilted and that was more so due to the fact that I wasn't used to like the overall positioning. I wasn't used to having that bar there. So I was kind of having to learn to like, you know, get it right where I want and bounce it out. But it felt a lot better. And for pause reps especially, those moved really, really well. So and then after that, I came in um, on my third SPD um, volume day of this block and hit that same weight, 375 pounds for a set of five at the same RP, RP7, but for normal competition squats. <laughs> see you know it's, with each day it's looking a little bit better um, and everything's just kind of coming together at this point so all the movement prep that I've been doing as far as um you know um, like the wall squat holds to really help me like you know align my pelvis and open up my hips more and really get my quads activated and engaged um the row with reach to kind of help me like you know um, just practice movements and, and planes that we don't usually work with we don't usually purposely do a whole lot of twisting and um, you know torsion <laughs> with with our torso when it comes to the big three and powerlifting even though I was obviously doing it on the squat even though I'm not trying to so you guys like I said can watch that in the description down below if you want to see like what movements I've been doing and why and then you guys already know the different accessory movements that I do you guys know that I'm big on accessory work to help building up weaknesses um, you know you have like your variations to help you focus on um, more functional aspects like for example the sumo deadlift which allows me to focus on lower back extension a lot more than what I can in my conventional <laughs> my high bar squats which also make it a lot easier to like you know focus on just that lower back extension as well as fighting to keep my upper back tight to be in that nice upright position which is what I want to do on the low bar as well Four, five, six, two more. And then, of course, you know, just the general back work that we have, like, you know, our penlay rows, our pull-ups. You guys have seen that. You know all about that. Despite the fact that, you know, I was working on these different, like, you know, 
um, all this mobility and movement prep, despite the fact that I was working on, you know, the success work and building up, like, you know, my musculature and stuff like that. There's a difference between, you know, being strong, having a strong back for a pull up or a row, and then taking that and actually being able to utilize it in the squat because, you know, you still have to be specific. There's nothing wrong with working on things that have good carryover. There's nothing wrong with movement prep. But at the end of the day, you do all these things so that you can get under the bar and actually fix the issues under the bar. These other things are just to help you be in a better position for fixing it under the bar. So, due to actually, like, you know, being able to get my back stronger, doing those different movement prep, working on um, shoulder mobility, working on better external rotation, and on, uh, you know, scapular depression, I was actually able to place the bar lower, and now you guys have kind of seen the benefits of that. So, um, a week ago, on my third SPD intensity day of the week, I hit 402 pounds for a top set of three at RP7, paused. Uh, there we go. Nice, nice and controlled. There we go. Yeah. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Nice. And, guys, this was huge for me. One, let's be real. I've never moved 400 anything that fast, paused or otherwise. But look at the overall positioning. Like, the bar's not tilting. I'm not twisting in the hole. My elbows aren't, like, flared back, like, you know, extreme. Like, you know, I've got, I've got them nice and retracted and depressed. I was just in overall really, really good positioning. And, and it finally clicked. Like, you know, I, the combination of getting used to the bar being in the lower position and then everything else that I've done with the movement prep and the accessory work, you know, building up to it all just like kind of finally came together and clicked now you know it's one of those things where oh this was awesome but can i replicate it well on this past tuesday which is my fourth and final volume spd um day, yeah volume spd day of this block i came in and hit 396 pounds for a top set of five at rp8 like seven and a half eight um for me i'm not <laughs> just just watch <laughs> Yeah, 396 pounds, so like just about four pounds under 400 for a top set of five at RPA, which was another PR for me. Now, the reason I said maybe like seven and a half, eight is because like I'm not used to the speed, so I put it at an eight to kind of be more conservative. Um, but Brennan feels like it may have even been closer like to a seven, seven and a half, just because it's cool with this new positioning and this new speed, even though I'm not grinding anywhere near as much, I can actually grind more. So it means that I could probably get to that point where, you know, I'm just doing so many reps to where like my squat starts slowing down and I can still push through it. But to, to not have to is such a huge mental relief. So anyway, today is the final uh, SVD intensity day. Since I hit 402 for my top set of three at seven today, I'm hoping for like, you know, anywhere between 410 to 420 for my top set of three at RPA. If it's not there, it's not there. I'm not going to overshoot, going to stick to the program. It's been nice to be able to stick to the program and still hit these PRs because I think it's stupid to go off program um, to hit a PR because you got to think about the long term. It's cool if you hit PRs along the way, but I've already talked to you guys about that when it comes to like your RP and your percentage-based work. If you're just sticking to the program and consistently progressing over time, you're going to start to hit those PRs, whether you mean to or not anyway, but what really matters is on meet day. But with that being said, your boy is hyped. Uh, Amber, Michael, and Jasmine are on the way here. We're all going to go right to POD together, meet up with Derek, and just have an awesome... Nah, sorry, there's an ad, guys. <laughs> have an awesome uh, SPD focus... Well, for me and Derek, it's an SPD focus day. For Amber, Michael, and Jasmine, it's just squatting daily. But yeah, going to go in there, show you guys exactly what the new low bar position looks like, and then we're going to see what we got on that top set of pod squats today. Let's go. All right, guys, hopping in for a voiceover so I can take you through what my new setup looks like and just talk to you guys about a few things. So right here, you guys are seeing where my old low bar position was. So obviously not as low as where it's about to be with the new position. And with this, you guys are going to be able to see that I'm one, just far more depressed. And this new position allows me to keep my upper back much tighter without having to really think about it as much. Like I still got to make sure I'm consciously retracting but it just comes a lot more naturally with having this bar lower. And you guys are gonna see that, notice I'm not like squeezing my glutes as hard at the top. I'm instead just kind of staying where I'm at and focusing on just keeping that back nice and extended. You guys are able to see this on this warm up from the back and you're gonna see it on all the warm ups working up to my top set. But um, with that being said, I kind of just wanna talk to you guys about understanding 
that sometimes guys these things like when it comes to your form especially as you get stronger it takes time when you're a beginner even in like you know a uh, uh, freshly intermediate lifter it's going to be really easy to just kind of truck away through things and like regardless of how good or bad your form is just get stronger but you're going to get to a point especially based upon your leverages where you have to actually work on things like positioning form better programming all that's going to come into play when it comes to just getting stronger for me guys keep in mind the beginning of 2018 my squat max was 452 and the most i hit um in all 2018 was 460 so i didn't have a whole lot of time to just really push things the way that i want but now that i've got my form to the point that it's at you guys are going to start seeing a whole lot more progress with my squad as a whole and i'm expecting big big prs um, in 2019, but I'll talk to you guys a little bit more about that at the end of the video. So that last warm up was 396, felt nice and easy. Uh, I'm gonna shoot for like 413 next and see if that's the eight, if so call it there. If not, I might go to 420. I'm not bracing quite as hard as I know I need to, just because my stomach's feeling a little eh today. So when I brace really hard, I almost feel like I'm gonna throw up mid set. I'm not trying to do that, but uh, on this top set, I'm just gonna say screw it. It's hard. And uh, if I throw up, I throw up. All right, guys, so <laughs> I actually did end up uh, throwing up after that set. So, you know, like I told you guys, I was going to go in there and brace as hard as I could because I knew that I had to in order to, like, maintain position, especially, like, with that much weight. That was a huge PR for me, guys, like 10-pound PR um, from last week. And just, like, I've never moved for 13 that easily for reps, pause or otherwise. But got in the bar, got tight, braced hard on the first one, felt good. Brace hard on the second one, felt good. Then as I, I came up on the third one, if you guys notice, there's like this brief, there's just like a slight bit more hesitation before I did the third rep. And even Michael and JD were spotting me, said that my eyes got kind of wide because on the third one, as I was bracing, I felt the puke like coming up. So I like, so I stopped, it, like held it there. So I didn't brace fully, but I was kind of like holding the throw up there. And I'm like, am I really about to do this? I'm like, I gotta do it. So I'm like, I got spotters, so I might as well go for it. Um, so I went for it, got it, because I couldn't brace as hard, like a little bit more stall than what I want on the third rep, but still got through it racked it calmly kind of like you know walked outside and just let it all out but what's insane guys is that that third rep like still moved better and faster than what like a single at rp6 used to move for me that's what's crazy about it even under those circumstances so really happy about that that was probably close to like rp like eight and a half like the true eight that i wanted simply due to what happened to the third rep but i'll take it man like great way to end this block super excited super happy about that all right, guys, so letting clips of everybody else's squats as well as my top set of bellows, deadlifts, and bench press play while I finish talking to you guys and closing this video out. But all I was getting at, guys, was that, you know, all of 2018, even though I did get stronger on all three lifts, it was primarily focused on just really rebuilding my base of technique and really finding what works well for my structures and leverages. Like working, you know, for this whole first year under Brendan, a lot of it was coming to the realization that, hey, you know what, you're not exactly structurally built the best for powerlifting. So we had to do a bunch of trial and error to see what worked, what didn't work. And it would seem like, you know, sometimes we'd be moving in the right direction, then we hit a stall, and then we add that in with a bunch of like, you know, just the different life things and personal issues that I was going through this past year that kind of like took away from training as a whole, it's, you know, it can seem a little, I guess, you know, upsetting or depressing like, oh man, you spent a whole year just to like, you know, kind of find the perfect or, you know, the right technique, but it's been so worth it guys because it makes me have a deep profound appreciation for where I'm actually at now. And that's what really matters guys. Like when you're just structurally built well for this stuff and it comes easy to you based upon your genetics, or even if you're, even if you're not, and things, but things just go constantly going well with your training, it's easy to want to go in there and kill it. But when you have to learn to literally overcome certain obstacles to get where you want to be, it makes the journey that much more fun. And it's just really nice to finally be at a point where I now know that I will squat 500 pounds this year and also just have really big PRs on, you know, the bench and the deadlift as a whole. 2019, guys, is going to be an excellent year. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you did. 
If you're not, leave a comment down below. Let me know what I can do to get better. Like the video, share, subscribe. Keep it simple, specific, scientific, and I'll catch you guys later.